name is Guillermo Campo, and today I'm going to be talking about something I like to call the techno-human race. Now, before we start talking about what, what is the techno-human race, I want to tell you guys a little story. So, I was 14 years old once, and I was playing video games all day. It was 8 o'clock in the night, and it was a school day. My then, my parents walked in on me and immediately told me to stop playing video games because, well, it was a school day and they told me that I would not be able to get a good night's sleep if I kept on playing. Begrudgingly, I turned off my console and I went to bed, still angry that I would not be able to finish that level in that day. I woke up the next morning and, still angry, I decided to see if what they told me was really true. If the lo if it was true that the, the longer period of time I would be exposed to, say, a video game screen would mean that I would be unable to get a good night's sleep. So I started doing my research on this, on this question, and I wasn't able to find a conclusive answer. There was nothing that told me exactly if it was really true that a longer period of time exposed to some technology would mean a worse quality of sleep in that night. But what I learned was something very interesting, was that the blue light emitted by most devices, such as tablets, iPhones, and televisions, is the type of light in the visible light spectrum that most disrupts our sleep-wake cycles, so the cycles in our bodies that make us, that makes us want to go to sleep and wake up. And so I made an assumption and said, okay, this is interesting. Maybe I can start from here. But I was still not satisfied and decided to continue my research and fully answer my question in a more direct manner. So, using my knowledge on the blue light and, and how technologies work, I gathered 182 adolescents from the city of Porto Alegre, Brazil, and made them answer questionnaires asking how long they expose themselves to technologies on a weekly basis, and how would they rate their sleep quality in the past six months. And what I learned was something very interesting. So, based on my results, I was partially right. In fact, I learned that the longer I would expose myself to, say, a television screen or a mobile phone would not have a direct effect on my sleep quality. However, what was interesting is that, what, is that technologies did, in fact, influence our sleep quality in one way. Say if I would keep on playing that night and, and I uh, stayed awake up until 1 a.m. playing video games. And then I went further and played up until 3 a.m. and then up until 4 a.m. My sleep quality would be by my exposure to technology. Because what I learned is that the more I expose myself in later periods during the day, so later and later in the night, the worse my sleep quality becomes. And this is because our bodies, when they receive the information that light is being shown to our retinas, uh, they understand that it is currently, say, a day time period. And this whole system in our brains goes completely haywire because our bodies are unable to understand that it is, in fact, night and are unable to follow through with the processes that make us go to sleep. And this is an example of, of the concept that I call the techno-human race, which is the capacity of uh, us as a species to develop new technologies and spread these technologies within our societies, and our bodies' capacities to adapt with these new types of technologies. So, I believe all of us are familiar with all the scenarios that I didn't even. All of us, at some point in our days, are exposed to some type of technology, say an iPhone, a television, an iPad, a computer, a laptop, you name it. And we never really ask ourselves how these technologies impact our bodies. Humanity did not evolve with an, oh, with an iPhone in their hands or crunching numbers in front of a computer screen. And the fact that these technologies become so ubiquitous in our societies does in fact have an impact on our bodies because it's something completely new to us, even though we grew up in these environments. It was a little more than 10 years ago that Steve Jobs introduced the first iPhone. 
And well, now in 2019, I believe all of us at least know someone that holds or owns a smartphone. This is amazing, people. This technology in less than 10 years became a predominant part in our daily routines. And we never asked ourselves, how does this impact our health? Because as technologies become more and more ubiquitous, they become a part of our daily lives, and in one way or another, they impact our health. As our body becomes unable to distinguish between days and nights, we become more prone to suffering from diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and suffer from multiple metabolic conditions that result from this inability. Because to our bodies, it is completely absurd that we, say, are exposed to artificial light now that it is at night. And we never fully realize this. It is not as if Steve Jobs, when he presented the first iPhone, thought how blue light emitted by his device would impact our health. How this could be a potential problem. It is not like Nikola Tesla, or back then, early in the 20th century, realized well, that when he proposed the AC current, the alternating current, it would become such a predominant feature in our societies to the point that we would be able to illuminate our cities to the point where we have this in our modern time, where shines shine as bright in the night that went in day. There was an amazing massive blackout, and some people were so afraid of the night stars that they literally call the police because they never have they have never seen the Milky Way in their in their skies. And it is it goes without saying that these people that these people's metabolic conditions would be considerably worse compared to those of other cities that suffer from less of the massive artificial of the massive spread of artificial light during the night. So what can we take away from all this? We understand that humanity's progress does not stop. 200 years ago, it would be completely ludicrous to say that our night skies would, bright as much, would shine as bright as our days, or that we would be able to record moments in our lives with small devices that we can put in our pockets. And it goes without saying that we would not even be able to imagine the earth would look like in the next 200 or 2,000 years. And our bodies would never be able to fully adapt to these new technological upsurges. Because even though we live longer and live healthier lives, humanity still did not evolve holding an iPhone in their hands or living with, or living with night, night lights behind their beds. But still, we cannot go and ignore these health issues that come with these new technologies. We always need, we must be mindful of how we accept, say, an iPhone in our lives, or a tablet in our lives, or a laptop, or when we turn or when we turn lights on in the night. If say a new device comes up and everybody starts using it in the next say months, we shouldn't ask ourselves just what can this technology do for us. We should ask what can this technology do to us. Because as much as we can try, our bodies don't evolve that fast. And when we are talking about something like a chronobiological cycle, which is a cycle that is dictated by external stimulus, such as say day and night periods, we can't just accept new things without considering how it can this impact our bodies. Every living organism known to man operates in some sort of chronobiological cycle ranging from bacteria, to plants, to mammals, and that includes humans. And therefore, we must, we must always consider testing new technologies when using them. You need to ask yourself, how can this impact them? I, for one, I still use my mobile phone, but I remember to turn off the lights when I go to bed. Thank you for your attention, and have a good night.